Hey everyone, what's up? Thanks for tuning in. So today I am going to work on a flash sheet, kind of like this. So a flash sheet of tattoo designs for the tabletop RPG nerds out there, because um, I am one. Um, so yeah, yeah. The the last nerdy flash sheet that I did right here uh, had had a bunch of the quote softies on it. So. I figured that would be kind of kind of fun to continue to work on um, because yeah yeah I, I don't know <laughs> uh, I'll be moving into the mid toughness characters today so I'm thinking uh, like a monk a cleric um, maybe a ranger and bard and then I'll finish up the next one with uh, like the fighter and the barbarian stuff like that uh, on the the pally I'll, I'll do a paladin too but yeah let's let's uh let's get to it first of all one second Get rid of this sheet. Let's make a new one. Make sure I got my pencil. And let's take it from there. So, which one should I start with? I don't know. I do not know. Uh, I want to tune into the chat. Um, actually, before we get started, um. I'm going to start with the bard, uh, but before we actually do get started, make sure you visit joshj.blog forward slash links if you want to check out everything I'm doing, schedule a consult for a tattoo or an illustration, buy me a coffee, or sign up for my email list. Uh, that's that's where everyone gets their notifications. Oh, am I still? No, I'm not sharing my drawing screen. Sorry. Sorry. Um, Facebook's being weird. Looks like audio has been cutting in and out. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, let's get to it. Let's get to it. We're going to start with a bard. Um, so let's see. Bard is a D8. Really short word for bard, too. So I don't need a huge ribbon to say bard. I'll just do a nice... Nice ribbon like so, but bards are fancy, so I want to do something fun with the ribbon. So we'll say the ribbon comes up. Crazy things with this ribbon. So ribbons are actually a whole lot of fun for to to draw for me. <laughs> um, actually, I think I'm gonna just for the balance of the design, I'm gonna keep the ribbon flowing down on this one. So let's erase all of this, and we'll we'll keep the ribbon nice and simple. Well, not simple, but we'll keep the ribbon nice and uh, balanced. Now, the fun part is deciding, like, is this ribbon coming forward or going back? Forward or back? Um, so I think I'm actually going to play with that uh, a little bit. So let's say the ribbon comes back in front here. It gives us sort of a, a spiral. This side. 
and on this side we'll keep it going you know we'll we'll play with that spiral idea again Yeah, no, it's getting away from me. I want to keep it simple. <laughs> Trying to get too fancy with the bard. That was sort of the point, but it's been a crazy morning. I don't feel like uh, doing anything too wild and wacky for the parents out there you'll understand <laughs> just so I can spot any glaring inconsistencies I like to flip the canvas every now and then so uh, as a traditional artist you would look at your work in a mirror to get the same effect so that you can see like oh wow this is not symmetrical right here and it really needs to be so that's how a traditional artist would would approach this practice of flipping the canvas but as a digital artist i can i can literally just flip the canvas back and forth as much as i want and I apologize, I am going to be checking my messages pretty frequently. I'm going back and forth with a client right now, trying to hammer out some details of uh, the design. Things are interesting on, on that front, so um, for people considering getting their first tattoo, I would highly recommend, uh, one, budgeting for something meaningful. And, uh, typically, the I'm not saying you have to get a huge tattoo for your first tattoo. Uh, I've had a few clients that were like, yeah, go big or go home and get like, I had one client get a full sleeve onto his chest for his very first tattoo. I was like, all right, that's huge. Good for you, dude. Um, but try to budget for something meaningful. And when you do that, you're much less likely to regret your first tattoo. Odd little side note here. Uh, first character that I knew of named Bard, uh, as far as a character in a book goes, was Bard from Lord of the Rings. Um, now, William Shakespeare was also known as the Bard. So that should give you a few ideas on, on the origins of the word bard and if anyone has any other fun interesting facts about bard drop it in the comments uh, like the word bard not bards themselves and in, in tabletop rpgs so i say tabletop rpgs partially because of all of the drama that wizards of the coast has been dropping lately um they've lost a lot of loyal fans over their uh possibly revoking the open game license 
Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with Hasbro owning Wizards now. I mean, it's just, it hasn't been the same since TSR. <laughs> TSR, like, TSR, for those of you who are completely unaware, is the company that owned Wizards of the Coast. Or, not sorry. TSR is the company that owned and created Dungeons and Dragons. It was a collaboration between Gary Gygax and, oh, there was another Gary. It's almost like the apple fame you know <laughs> there's a long interesting history there um but up until second edition dnd it was a tsr product which second edition dnd is commonly known as advanced dungeons and dragons and that's when i started playing um like i bought some of the very first computer programs for dnd uh, like forever and a day ago there was a there was a, a program that would allow you to have your character sheet on your computer and print it now that program from TSR cost me like 30 bucks at the time and now of course you can you can make your own character sheets and print them and do whatever you want with them Pretty much at will. It's it's kind of kind of crazy to see how far things have come. You've got virtual tabletops, and you can play online. You don't have to sit there and, and play uh, like Neverwinter Nights one. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. RPGs have have come so far. Any more? I prefer Pathfinder, uh, especially Second Edition is really interesting with the mechanics for me I, I i would love to get another group going sometime um but it's hard to find a reliable crowd of people to play with and uh, i don't want to dm anymore <laughs> or gm i'm sorry i don't want to gm anymore so if anyone has any recommendations on where to find a good gaming group where i don't have to run the game and you can meet regularly without uh, without worrying too much about whether the group is going to show or any of that fun stuff drop a comment and let me know and hello viewer whoever you may be all right so the bard is a d8 soft like not quite as softy so i I'm going to cheat a little bit. And by cheat, uh, I don't mean actually cheat, because this is not cheating. Hold on. So, D8. Bards are crazy, so I'm going to tilt this D a little bit just for giggles and and whatnot uh, so I've got some pre drawn dice here to make this much easier to plan out at least using the line tool instead of trying to freehand each one of these because accuracy uh, I mean if I can get free accuracy I'm not going to waste that get rid of my d8 close my dice panel there we go so imagery when you think of a bard what kind of imagery should I use for the bard it's a good question good question um I'm feeling like a mug of ale. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go ale. Ale, ale, ale. I've been trying to keep this super illustrative too, so let's let's just have some fun with this mug. Uh, 
I'm going to draw this on a new layer. Uh, and then I'll merge it down later. So. Thinking sort of like a clay mug, um, just because if you can think of like a mug being very handmade, it's a lot more fun. <laughs> like you walk into a tavern. <laughs> Any good tavern is not going to have perfect mugs for their ale. There's going to be like freaking chips out of it. Because, you know, good tavern, their, their stuff gets used. Right, right. And let's see, maybe some bubbly in there. Some some good ale. Ooh, that's another thought. What if what if I did a wooden mug? Wooden ale mug. Okay, what in the world? Okay, all right. That's a thing. Yeah, let's uh, let's rethink this design a little. I like the idea of maybe doing a still want to keep it. I don't know very much illustrated but we're going to turn it into more of a, a barrel mug let's match It up fairly close anyway I want this wacky and fun not uh, not like a perfect drafted mug it's it's gonna be a fun so yeah all right I'm, I'm not gonna bother explaining that too much I really want this to be a wacky and fun sort of design, not perfectly drafted. But I do want it to be somewhat accurate. So here we've got like many staves. Uh, if you've ever worked in a stave mill for wine barrels, you sort of know what I'm talking about. So these are like mini staves. And as they wrap around the, the mug, they should be getting smaller because of perspective. Now, I am going to simplify this. That's foam up there. And we've got ourselves a fun mug full of full of ale and goodness. Let's spin this. And we'll throw it Out there. 
time up there. So that avoids any tangents. Uh, now a tangent is whenever a point meets another point. Actually, what I wanna do is add a transparency mask. So a transparency mask lets me erase without actually erasing. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So here I can erase everything that is behind the ribbon but it's not actually gone see it's just masked off sort of like a I don't even know how to explain it right now my brain's not working too great this morning um so <laughs> Uh, yeah, crazy, crazy morning, actually. The, uh, the, the whole reason I said that, uh, it's been a crazy morning and I was talking about that earlier is, well, three kids. <laughs> My wife works 10 hour shifts on occasion. And when she's working 10 hour shifts, I typically have to get the kids ready mostly by myself um, and normally that's not a huge huge deal but lately I'm not sure what's going on uh, my son has been having uh, some uh, I don't know like he's, he's struggling with his emotions a little bit and I mean, I understand, but ooh, it's frustrating at times. It's very frustrating at times. Huh. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. I'm not... I'm not horribly torn up about it, but it, it does get a little wild and crazy around the house in the mornings. Um, so I'm... I'm working with that lately <laughs> all right so next up let's do some sort of musical instrument maybe two huh favorite bard instruments that's a good question you know what let's ask chat gpt version three uh it's open ai huh. wow has has some really interesting technology. Okay, yeah, there's... Artificial intelligence, for those of you who are not uh, up on the game, is getting scary. <laughs> But in my opinion, it's getting scary in a good way. Um, so OpenAI has created Dolly, which is the, the foundation for a lot of those face app designs that you've been seeing, like people who have fed their faces into a, an AI and said, you know, do it in this style, blah, blah, blah. Um, but they're also responsible for ChatGPT3, which is the most powerful natural language model ever created. Like it's it's almost like talking to a person who knows everything up until the year 2021. Now it's 2023 now, so some of the information is outdated, but not that outdated. So I'm gonna ask, you know, what are some musical instruments commonly associated with tabletop RPG bards, question mark. 
And now ChatGPT is thinking, thinking, thinking. Oh, it might be overloaded. Here we go. Often associated with musical instruments. Some of the most common instruments associated with bards include the lute, the harp, flute, a violin. Ooh, that's an interesting one. A, a guitar. A dulcimer. Pan flute. Ooh, a pan flute could actually be really fun to draw. Um, so I think I want to do number one and number seven. So I'll do a lute and a pan flute in the background for the bard. Thanks, chat. Um, but yeah, I've been I've been trying to leverage AI in smart and responsible ways. Uh, there have been a lot of lawsuits filed against companies like Midjourney and uh, Stability AI because they're stealing images and the the ethics behind it are are a little bit uh i don't even know how to describe that the ethics behind it it's it's mostly a matter of opinion where i see the line being drawn is whenever it, it's sort of like owning a firearm so do you sue the company who makes the firearm for violent acts committed with the firearms or do you hold the people who commit the violent acts accountable i think the answer probably lies somewhere in the middle um i think there needs to be more responsibility in the creation of ai but at the same time the people using ai need to understand that um like when you steal a bunch of stuff from artists they're going to be mad so what I try to do typically is avoid using uh, any prompts that use another artist's name in the prompt because that's that's really where you're starting to step on some toes. <laughs> and you might not want to step on toes if, uh, if you want a career in art in the future. So yeah, don't steal other people's art. Also, I think there needs to be like a burden of proof similar to this. I mean, you can see that I'm drawing, but there needs to be a burden of proof on artists now to prove that you have created some of the work that you're posting. Um, how far does that go? I really don't know. I, I don't have a clue. All right, so I am going to use a dual brush now to create my own little loot. Which is, you know, a guitar. <laughs> really it's a it's it's a guitar. It's a tiny guitar. I've got a fret plate. L listen to me pretending like I know what I'm talking about. I really don't. Switch back to regular brush. Oops, let's switch to the lines. There we go. I don't like this snapping. What's going on with the snap? So there's, there's a sketchy little loot. And I want to put this loot. We'll do it. We'll do it pretty massive. Uh, 
All right. So just like, just like before, we're gonna we're gonna make us a transparency mask and erase everything that is well, not erased. We're gonna mask off everything that is behind the ribbon or behind the D A. So that that looks pretty decent. What else? Oh, the uh, oh, pan flute. Let's see. Let me see if I can find a pan flute image. Now the issue with the pan flute is that it looks just as we can see the whole thing. I don't want to draw the whole thing in this design. I need to find a way that shows off the pan flute. Ooh, there we go. A seven tube pan flute made of bamboo from Etsy. Uh, so just so I'm avoiding any copyright infringement with illustrating this, I am going to <laughs> uh, sketch it without showing my reference. So the pan flutes are laid out about like so with tubes of bamboo uh, cut to different lengths like that. Um, I would like this to be somewhat accurate. So Let's, let's undo everything that I'm doing here and I'll use the line tool. Um, I'm gonna reset the canvas. Uh, let's not do that. So I am going to make one piece of pan, like one of the flute pieces. Copy and paste. Paste, 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 paste. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just gonna do a five tube pan flute. Scoot it over, shrink it up. <laughs> Scoot it over, shrink it up a little more. Scoot it over, shrink it up a little more. And finally, scoot it over and shrink it. All right, so there we've got a decent little pan flute. Now I'm gonna copy it one more time, create sort of this uh, band thing that holds all of the, the flute pieces together. And it looks like a lot of the flute pieces have different pieces uh, and different heights for the, uh, the opening in the flute. That was odd, but interesting. All right, I'm gonna merge these layers down. So they're all on one layer now, like that. Yeah, just get rid of these lines. Oh, but yeah, with, with the talk about AI, I think I think the burden of proof is gonna fall on artists now. So yeah, AI, super convenient. It's gonna displace a lot of people, um, like a whole lot of people. And that's really crappy in a way. Uh, but complaining about a technology that's there isn't going to fix it. Uh, I think it's important that we start figuring out what regulations need to happen 
with AI before it gets way out of hand. Um, and it might already be getting out of hand. I don't know. Here I'm just adding a little bit of um, visual interest by making it more inconsistent. Like I wanted it to be accurate but not mechanical. And that's the danger that you run into when you use tools to perfectly replicate other stuff, including Wait for it. AI. So AI has a very mechanical quality to it. I mean, no matter how good AI gets, I think there's always going to be a market for like spoke art. Um, that's my personal opinion. I don't know how accurate that opinion is, but I think artists are always going to have a place in the world. Uh, we might just have to accept that it's not the place we originally thought. So this is a pan flute and you know what? I want to try out some new tools. So I've got this distort tool here. I'm going to test it out. Like I really want to, I want to see how wild and wacky I can get this, this pan flute. I wanted to have fun. Like, what happens if I bend in these edges a little tiny bit? Does that make it more fun? I think it makes it more fun. Yeah, we're going to roll with that. That's a fun pan flute right there. <laughs> uh, now, a pan flute, I don't think is as big as... Uh, I don't think it's as big as a lute. So how am I gonna put this pan flute up here? So that you can tell it's got sort of different lengths. That's pushing it a little bit. That fills a gap. What if I make it smaller? So that's making a tangent. How's that? That's still making a tangent. So this is the challenge of a design. So I need to make sure that the silhouette of this is still interesting. I need to make sure that everything reads as what it is. What if I what, what if I flip this around? Would that help? So let's layer, transform, mirror. Does that make this pan flute easier to throw in? You know what? I think it might. Bring it up. That's getting awfully close to a tangent, but I think... That'll work. That'll work. All right. So let's do the same thing. Let's uh, add a transparency mask and get rid of the. Oh. Let's see. Yeah, we'll we'll go to the, the pencil. Get rid of that. And some of the really fun designs that I've seen for Bard have like a music banner behind them. I don't know if that's the route I want to go. Let's see. I can do coins. 
bards love their coins. I could do a few musical notes without like a whole score. Let's do a musical note or two, maybe a quarter note, a couple, a couple eighth notes, and then some coins. Yeah. All right. So let's reset this brush. Or a half note in there. Quarter note. Oh, I was doing this on the ball layer. That's all right. So I'll just cut these, paste them. That makes a new look. No. Cut. Paste. Oh, wait. It did make a new layer. I don't need this transparency mask though. There we go. Big empty space over here. I'm going to fill it with another note. Here we go. Uh, all right. Oh, what else? Coins. Coins and coins and coins. Toss a coin to your not witcher, but your bard. Yeah. Sorry, I'm letting my nerd out a little bit more. Go. So for coins, I also like to throw a <laughs> quick uh, little cheat in using the ellipse tool
So, funny, another funny little random tidbit fact. If you ever see an old, old gold coin, sometimes you'll see a little notch in them. It's because gold is a soft metal, and sometimes the old coin, uh, coin exchange peoples would always bite the coin to make sure it was legitimate. Um, if they could, if they could put a notch in it with their tooth, it was real gold. Yeah, that, that, I always thought that was kind of hilarious and fascinating. All right. Now, just because I've had a, a nice background behind everything else that I've been creating, I am going to have sort of this uh, smoky design going on behind the bard. Nothing too major because this one's already getting a little bit busy, but it adds a nice uh, frame or outer border to the design and some of those uh, shapes in there right now are already breaking the border which is good uh, it keeps it interesting like it. I like it. So there's my bard design. That's really freaking huge. So I'm gonna... Whoa! Ha 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 ha. Alright. Let's go ahead and merge these down. So there's my bard design. Uh, let's shrink it down and then I'll get to inking. Alright, so we did one more today. And I did not realize how long that was gonna take. I got a little distracted on the... Uh, AI conversation, I guess. Uh, I had some some hawking topics today, but you know, I just I ended up drawing, uh, which I do nonstop, which has caused some carpal tunnel issues, uh, which I'm trying to get taken care of because carpal tunnel for a tattoo artist is not good. Um, but yeah, that's that's a topic for another day, I guess. Thank you all for tuning in. It's always a blast to work on this stuff live. Uh, just because I have to walk. I'm not very good at it, but hopefully I'll get better one day. And yeah, yeah. Uh, also, I wanted to mention, I'm gonna be trimming my live streams down to once per week for now, even though this is fun. Tuesdays have been extra crazy for me lately. Like I've missed two, two or three Tuesdays in a row. So rather than saying, or no, not in a row, I got them both last week, but rather than saying, you know, this is going to be an every Tuesday and Thursday thing. I'm just going to cut it down to Thursdays for now. Uh, a little less pressure unless these start taking off. Um, if these start getting more traction, then I'll restart the Tuesday live stream as well. But for now, just Thursdays. Uh, so that being said, I will see you all next Thursday. Until then, make sure you check out my website at joshj.blog. Uh, I've been updating and refreshing a lot of my older articles, so hop on those. Uh, the networking articles, they're, they're slowly being revamped. Uh, and hop on my email list if you're interested in getting those updates. So until next week, take it easy, keep on drawing, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.